We interrupt your regularly scheduled programming to bring you this special presentation. Greetings, traveler, from beyond the fog. I am shameless. I have been shameless ever since I first entered the lands between. With each passing day, I strive to become more and more shameless. I offer you an accord. I will make you overpowered early game beyond your wildest dreams. You have only to take me with you and become utterly shameless. Alright, enough of that. My name is Major Slack, and as some of you might have guessed, this is my latest early OP Elden Ring build. It's basically a heavy hitter slash ultimate crowd control slash long distance sniper slash David Copperfield shit stealth assassin slash faith. No wait, strength, faith. No wait, strength, faith, and arcane build. All that in one build? Yes, all that in one build. <laughs> And I hope you all have access to a good lawyer because this build is criminally insane. For all you holier than Elden Beast elitists who think stuff like this makes the game too easy, you are dismissed. Everybody else who wants to do everything you saw me do in the intro and more without breaking a sweat, saddle up, lock and load, put on your utterly shameless game face, and follow me. Let's get busy and I'll tell you more about it on the way. All right, we're going to start out as a confessor. That's non-negotiable. I'm going to call my girl Shameless, of course. Keepsake, lands between rune. That's non-negotiable. And we are ready to rock and or roll.
We'll be skipping all the dialogue. Okay, this will run about four or five episodes. Uh, the samurai walkthrough will continue right after that. If you've been... Right, sounds a little to be loud here. There we go. Okay, if you've been waiting for Starfield, please subscribe to my other channel, Major Slack Attack. That's where I'll be covering Starfield eventually, if all, if all goes well. Alright? If you're new to the game, just do exactly what I'm doing. If you have any questions, don't hesitate to post a comment, and I'll be glad to answer your questions in the um, comment section. Alright, this first boss fight is uh, basically a challenge. You don't need to do it. As soon as you see the big red bar, jump over the side, commit suicide, and Bob's your uncle. Skippy Skippy. Get the two flasks. Okay, I've got a massive to-do list here. I've been through this run um, maybe about a dozen times, I'm not kidding, and I've changed this strategy about as many times. Went through it all on my laptop yesterday and hoping like everything I have on my laptop is the latest version of this run. So uh, I'm relying on you Mr. Laptop, don't let me down, seriously. Massive, massive to-do list. Okay, so we're heading straight for the church dead ahead, in case you're new to the game. This opening part, we're just going to get um, a Golden Rune 2, which will add on to our Lands Between Rune keepsake. And that'll give us a total of 3,400 runes to start out with. We've discovered the church. Here's your Golden Rune 2 and discover the Church of Ella. Smithing Stone. Ignore the Merchant for now. We're just going to go straight through the woods to the north. There's kind of a natural path through the woods. You see dead ahead above Shameless's head. Kind of a natural path through the woods here. And just avoid everybody. We don't need to uh, engage. Going straight for the gate front runes side of grace to meet Melina. Okay, I'm just going to jam through all the dialogue and get the horse. The spectral steed whistle, rather. Skippy Skippy and Skippy Skippy. Have you heard? They serve, but you. I can play the role turning runes to aid you. You need only to, to the foot. Then it says summon me. Ah, I bequeath to you. You. It will summon a torrent as you treat him with respect. All right, this is what I always do um, when I start out. I favorite these three sites of grace: Church of Ella, Gate Front, First Step, Church of Ella. Let's go back there. And this talk to Witch Rena. May I have a word? A pleasure to end the word. I'd heard tend upon looking in the talk. I saw thou art as the call for. Ah, I was in try torrents. Tis a bad summon them the spirit now it is that forgive I doubt we shall again how long will before the time very good okay so how long did that take I'm just curious four minutes and 35 seconds so there's that's all no biggie um let me get organized here 
the wolves go there. Specs shall stick, whistle close there. Let's wait till daytime. And this is basically where it starts. Let's go cash in. Everybody should have 3,400 runes at, the, at your disposal. You're, and I can also see that you're not. Then why not purchase? I am Carlin. Ching. Cha Ching. Back to purchase. Buy the crafting kit and three cracked pots. That's Goodbye. it. Level up strength to 14. Back to gate friend. Alright, cooking them right along here. Gate friend, Mr. Laptop says, oh yeah, we have to get the uh, Lord Sworn's Greatsword. Okay, Assassin's Approach. Silences your footsteps for 30 seconds. Let's use that. Just sneak right up on this guy. I love Assassin's Approach. It kicks ass. Okay. The Confessor starts out with that. Kill that guy, one shot. Grab yourself to the Lord Sworn's Great Sword. Hop on your horse. Gallop straight to down towards this pillar. Grab the map. Turn this way. Head straight for the cooking pot. Quickly grab the butterflies. Hop over here. Hop off your horse and into the cellar, and down you go. And we're going to grab the whetstone knife and the ash of war storm stop. Hop on your horse, and out you go. And that's it. You can run over here and grab these smoldering butterflies and down to the Agile Lake North side of Grace right here. Make sure you rest. Okay, resting it up here, boss. This will reset the game. That's important. Okay. Hop on your horse. Head due southeast. Just ignore that guy. Don't fuck with him, and he won't fuck with you. Pardon my French. You, you there? Could you help us out? Can Let's you? engage Bach. Hit that bush to free him, and then we'll have a little chat. He's gonna give you ten mushrooms. Some you will just thank you. I was when I ended them. Look. Oh, when they threw. So this is all I have. I hope you. Thanks, Buck. I could sneak. Wham bam, thank you, ma'am. That's all we want for you. Grab this artillery leaf and gallop towards the bridge down here to the south as fast as you can, because you want to get there before the. The horseman on the other side starts patrolling back, which he's doing right now. I'm a little late, that's okay. Quickly grab the smithing stone here and hop over this way. Hopefully he won't chase us. And grab this somber smithing stone here. <laughs> okay, that's one of those, uh, you gonna come this way? That's why I always hop off the horse to grab that. Because it's way easier to grab. I always hop off the horse to grab that. Okay, I haven't gotten the somber smithing stone one. Up here to the east. Towards waypoint runes. And just going to go up this hill here. Kill these guys. and get the gold pickled fowl foot and our business here is concluded what is next is optional I usually like to go for it if it's not too much trouble just jam into the corner here grab these smoldering butterfly and then get the hell out of dodge as quickly as you can if you can't do that, if you can't manage that, don't worry about it, it's no biggie but it would help Okay, and continue on to the south. Let me check with Mr. Laptop, see if I'm doing this right. Somber one, gold pickle file foot, Agil Lake South, yep. Watch out for that horseman there.
Okay, and grab that mushroom. Grab this golden room too. And back onto the road. Ignore this guy. Gallop straight down the center of the road and straight into the center of this bridge here. If you do that, the catapult or the ballista in the distance will miss you as it fires. It will go right over your head. Okay, it goes right over your head. Don't worry about it. Now you have a lot more time than you think while you're on this bridge here, so just get carefully up here. Grab this smith these three smithing stones here. Grab this stone sword key, that's very important. And these smoldering butterflies. So now everybody should have a big supply of mushrooms and at least three smoldering butterflies. Rest up here. Crafting. Make three fire pots. Get them ready to go. As we go into the next camp, we're going to wipe out all the doggies with the fire pots. It's the easiest way to take them down at this stage of the game with what we have. Okay, grab a shroom around the way. Two doggies dead ahead. I always go for the one on the right first. I'll hop off your horse. Fire pot for him. Instant kill. Fire pot for him. Instant kill. Assassin's approach. Run right up on this guy. Backstab. Whoops. That's the thing about um, Assassin's approach. Let me take care of this dog first. Oh, right. <laughs> That's so Come on, hurry up. There you go. Yeah, when you're using Assassin's Approach, make sure you don't make the mistake I did. Make sure you come to a full stop behind the enemy before you hit them and try to get like a sneak attack. Because otherwise, you'll just get a regular attack and you just you just be left with your pants, like your dick, ha dick hanging in the breeze. And then everything gets all screwed up. Okay, so make sure you grab the Morning Star from that carriage there. Make yourself another fire pot. Whip it at this guy. Assassin's approach. And then you can just like walk up and grab this smithing stone too here. And gallop away. And I'm glad that happened because that's a good demonstration of, you know, when things go horribly wrong. Make sure you come to a full stop. When you're using assassins approaching, coming up behind someone. And we can switch over to the Lord's Horn's Greatsword. As long as we two hand it. Sneak up on this guy. Get that. And we have everything we need. The Morning Star is basically the main thing we need. And let's discover the Sight of Grace. And that's it. We're going to come back here later. For now, back to Aguil Lake North. Let me check my laptop here. Castle Moor Rampart, Aguil Lake North. That's correct. Okay, so we're going to do the Artist Shack Sleep Pot Run. From here, face to the northeast. Gallop up through this field of swords here. And there's an unmarked camp dead ahead. I kind of want to veer around the left side here, avoiding all these guys here. Okay, there's a, there's a horseman there. There's another horseman potentially off to the right here. And basically head to the northeast. Head to that kind of like white cement pillar here. Grab this gold rune too here. Head to the east. Look for the three birds and drop off right beside the three birds and discover this side of grace here. Next, I'm going to gallop down the crevice between the runes and the rocks here, right like this. I'm going to take a little damage when you fall down here. Grab the shroom up here. Grab the poison bloom. 
Hit jump when you hit the spirit spring. Go up. Turn around. If the coast is clear, you can just go running in here and grab three Trina's Lily. One, two, three. And some bear poop. More bear poop. More bear poop. Smithing stone one. This homing instinct painting, this is actually going to become useful for this build. For once. Usually I sell that, but uh, this time might be useful. Okay, discover the side of grace here. And I'm basically heading towards the east. I'm going to drop off a cliff here. Keep going east. Drop off right about here. This is a run I figured that every melee character should do. Everything you see me doing up to this point, every melee character should do. Okay, come to this Golden Ring Graveyard here and get Fever's Cookbook 1. Make yourself a sleep pot. Get it ready to go. And grab 7 Golden Rings in here. 1. 2. 3. Four, five, six, and seven. That's it. Head north by northeast. Right about here, you're going to jump off. Go down in this tombstone here. Go off the right corner of the tombstone to the next tombstone down here. Jump down here. It's a safe drop down. Don't worry about it. Turn to the left and find this tombstone step here. Go out to the very edge carefully. Target the big bear at the bottom. Throw a sleep pot at him. As soon as it connects, back off. Get on your horse. Gallop. Jump. Land on this one here. Whoops, I missed. Oh. Get the smithing stone too. And get the F out of dodge, avoiding the bear. Typically, the bear and the wolves will engage with, he with each other. So you don't have to worry too much about them coming after you. Okay, having done that, grab that shroom in there. There, rather, and stick to the left side as you go all the way up here. Towards the spear spring, but we're not going to take the spear spring. We just want to get up the arse end of this teardrop scarab here. And get Sacred Blade, which is just perfect for this build. Just perfect. Over here to the Third Church America. Sacred Tear. Wondrous Physic and the Crimson Crystal Tear. Discover the Third Church. That's all you have to do is just discover it. And back on your horse. Jump through the hole to the right of the statue and go into the ravine here and find a little secret way gate hidden in the bushes here. Take the way gate. Once you arrive at Grail's Dragon Barrow, open the door. Now that we've exited Limgrave, the next time we rest at any side of grace, Melon is going to offer to take us to the round table hold. I want to hold off on that though. So just simply discover the side of grace, the side of grace rather. And let's get out of here. Head off to the right or to the left rather. And we are now in vulgar militiamen country. These little guys that look like little warlocks, extremely dangerous. We're not quite ready for them yet. There's one right there. Keep away from them as you go down here. Grab a golden seed. There's another one right there. You see right there. Keep away from those guys. We're not quite ready for them yet. But when you, we are ready for them, they're a good source of money. And head down here towards the bridge. Discover this side of grace. Once again, we're not going to rest because we're going to hold off on having Melina take us to the round table until later.
straight down towards the menacing looking dragon. He will leave you alone as long as you just kind of... That's unusual. A lot of unusual things are happening in this run. No, normally he leaves you alone. All you have to do is just go between his legs or under his wing. And you should get by no problem. I've never, ever been killed going across that bridge. Once in a while that will happen. You you know, take a little heat, but he never kills me. Okay, and over here to this uh, Golden Rune Graveyard. One. Two. There's four here. Three. And the fourth one is over here. Grab that. Take the Spirit Spring down. Go over here and discover the Site of Grace in case you screw up the next part. This is Lens Rise. We want to get in there. Typically there's a puzzle you solve to open the door, but Lens Rise doesn't work like that. Lens Rise, you have to use the Spirit Spring to get on top. Easiest way to do this is on foot, point yourself towards the east. Get on your horse. Look down. Press jump. And this will put you right on top of the roof here. Get off your horse. Point to the southwest. And carefully inch your way towards the edge here. And you'll slide down and onto this balcony here. And that's how you get in. Alright? This is to get a memory stone. So we're going to go all the way to the top. Take the elevator up and grab a memory stone from a chest at the very top. Okay, easy now, easy, easy. Wanna fall off? Okay, get yourself a memory stone and let's go back to Lance Rise to get back down to the bottom. Okay, we want to get back up on that cliff there, so we have to use the same spirit spring to get back up there. So point yourself to the west. Alley up. And retrace our steps. And now you're just going to point towards the minor earth tree right there. Until we get past these, these rocks here on the right side. Once you clear the rocks on the right side, you want to push to the west until you get to the edge of the cliff. Because there's a very dangerous enemy down there at the bottom. Okay, so once you get to the edge of the cliff here, you're going to follow the edge of the cliff all the way down. Stick to the edge of the cliff. There's the dangerous enemy right over there. A putrid avatar who will absolutely wipe his ass with you right over there. Okay, so definitely not ready for him yet. Straight down. To this side of grace here. Discover it. I'd show you the map because, but it doesn't really make much difference because there's no map for this area yet. So it's just a big brown area. Continuing. This little dragon here typically will leave you alone, don't worry about it. These guys are slow to react, you can easily gallop past them. Okay, so we're looking towards the cliffs on the left side here. And they're going to eventually slope down to meet the ground. Right here. When you find that point, you're going to double back. Double back, and there's going to be some more mini dragons here. They're all fairly docile. I mean, you, as long as you don't get right up in their face and start hitting them, they will leave you alone. There's one there. There's another one there. This is our target. This big white dragon here. It's completely... Um, what's the word? Harmless. He's very sick. If you kill him, in case you don't know, Kill that big dragon there, he will reward you with 60,000 plus runes. And if you have the gold pickle foul foot ready to go, 
that'll bump it up to 97,000 runes, 96,000 runes. So make sure you've got your gold pickle foul foot ready to go. Discover the side of grace. And hook up your morning star. Yes, we're going straight for the fort for Roth Dragon. I told you, this is going to be utterly shameless. Okay? Shameless. Okay. Here's how to kill the Fort Farad Dragon, in case you don't know, in case you're new to the game. Come around to this little red platform here, and basically you have to hit him 196 times. Yes, I counted, 196 times. Um, the Morning Star does bleed damage. See, look at the bottom there. Causes blood loss buildup, and that will do a major chunk of damage at the 15th hit the 36th hit, the 69th hit, the 102nd hit, the 135th hit, the 169th hit, and after that, you'll be close to death. You're going to take your gold pickle file foot, and that will kill him. Okay, yes, I mapped this all out. <laughs> okay, so let's just start wailing away. The only bottleneck is your stamina. You're eventually going to run out of stamina. So typically, I just like to wait till my stamina refills two-thirds and do five hits and then rinse and repeat. There you go, it's just on the top right corner of the screen, we got a bleed. Next bleed is going to come at the 36th hit. Watch the top right corner of the screen, a little health bar there. Once you see a massive chunk of damage going off, you know you got a bleed. This will take about 4 or 5 minutes, real time. Gonna do one more bleed and then it's gonna cast the spell of hurry the fuck up. And there, there's another bleed. Okay, so I'm just gonna fast forward and I'll see you on the flip side. There we go. So with your strength at 14 and using the Morning Star, you will bleed him six times just before killing them. So at this point you want to take your gold pick, gold pickle foul foot this will increase your uh, money by 30% and then just finish him off. So he's just got a smidge of health left. Should take only about 10 or 20 shots to finish him off. As soon as he kind of backs away, or you like knock him away, you know you killed him. There you go, knock him away, and that's it. Okay, and the money's going to come in in sections. First you get 64,000 runes. And then because we have the gold pickle file foot, we get a bonus that bumps it up to 96,000 runes. And we had about 1,000. So now we have a total of 97,000 runes. Now we're finally going to rest at a site of grace, the Fort Faroth site of grace. And Melon is going to offer to take us to the round table. There is but one other thing I can do to offer you guidance. I can take you to the round table hall, gathering place of tarnished champions Guided by Grace. Go to the round table hold. Yes, please. Very well. Let my hand rest upon you for but a moment. And we have arrived. We're at the round table hold. We have ninety seven thousand runes we are ready to rock and or roll okay let's take care of some flask business we picked up a golden seed on the way so we can increase the number of flask charges and we increase it picked up the sacred tier on the way increase the amount of HP FP replenished by flask and that is that done before we do anything else let's go buy some spells and let's switch over to the Lord's Grand's great sword don't worry if you can Unable to use this item effectively, we're going to fix that shortly. Okay? 
and talk to Brother Corrin oh, and agree nice. Welcome to the round with whatever he says. So that one ensuring by the way, do you still see it? The guidance of grace. Yes, we do. We do. Most tarnished of you are something well. Having been so agreeable, he will now offer his incantations for sale. We're going to buy two things. Heal and Flame Slaying. Okay, having bought those two. You may notice that we're not able to, to use the Lord Sworn's Great Sword properly because we don't have enough strength. Let's fix that right now. Do exactly what I'm doing, okay? Everything is planned. Level up. Strength to 16. Dexterity to 14. Faith to 24. And Arcane to 18 for now. We're going to save a little bit of money for something else. Okay? Once again, that's Strength 16, Dexterity 14, Faith to 24, Arcane to 18. Next, let's go upgrade the Lord's Horns Greatsword. Everybody should have 6 Smithing Stones 1 and 2 Smithing Stones 2. Let's use these to upgrade the Lord's Horns Greatsword to plus 2. Plus one, plus two. Exit, down to sell. Sell off all the golden runes that we got. Done and done. Next, memorize spells. The Confessor starts out with Urgent Heal and Assassin's Approach. Assassin's Approach kicks ass. Urgent Heal is not bad. It's good for like an emergency. Uh, but we don't really need this. Keep Assassin's Approach, hook up, Flame Sling, and Heal. Okay, so those are new spells. Assassin's Approach, Flame Sling, and Heal. Back out. Next, Wondrous Physic. Hook up the newly acquired Crimson Crystal Tear. We're going to use this for emergency health recovery. Next, Ash of War. I'm going to put the Sacred Blade on the Lord Sworn's Greatsword. Sacred Affinity. Okay. Next. We did Flask, we did Spells, we did Wondrous Physic, Ash of War. We're good. Take this guy out, and like I said, this will be kind of like emergency health recovery. Put it somewhere handy. Okay, recover half your health. And just checking out my to-do list here. We did that, we did that, we did that. That's it. So now we can spend our money. All the remaining money to level up Arcane. Okay. Up to 20. That's exactly correct. Okay. Our work here is done. Where do I go next, Mr. Laptop? Mr. Laptop says go to Gatefront. Oh, yeah, that's right. It's a good idea. Gatefront. And let me just point out something here. The key to this build is these right here. These five dragon hearts. I don't know how many times I've killed that four fraught dragon, got my money, and ran, and just totally ignored the fact that you also get five, count them, five dragon hearts. And that's the key to this build. I'm going to show you why later on, okay? These are very important. Um, what else did I want to show you? We don't have that yet. Oh, right. Um, the shield. Our shield has the parry skill on it. We don't want that. We want no skill on it. All right? Let's just wait till daytime and then we're going to gallop up to Storm Hill. Alright, straight up the center here. It's going to be a troll that drops down. Don't worry about it. You can quickly grab this lump of flesh here. Jump right here so that the troll, when he comes down, he doesn't stagger you off your horse. Quickly grab these smoldering butterfly here. Over this way and grab the mushroom. And there's a guy up ahead who's going to blow his bugle. I usually like to hit him. That's a tradition. I love doing that. <laughs> Give him a kick, Saturday. Really get my kicks doing that. Quickly grab the golden seed here. Out to the field here. Grab these three smithing stones here. Look on your map. 
you can see these kind of this wavy line here right okay if you see this dash right here the two dashes here you're gonna put uh, whoops a beacon right there right at that dash right there and head to your beacon and that'll take us to what I call worm bomb graveyard because when you go by these guys they blow up okay so having blown up those three guys there you can double back and safely loot all the golden runes in this graveyard okay there's three worm bombs to take care of there just run past them pick up all the money three golden runes in the first row three golden runes in the second row and two in the third Kill this guy because he's gonna harass you. Whoops, watch it now. Alright, having done that, turn to these. Find the two birds on the rock. Go to that rock. Okay, and what we want is this troll here to patrol down here. Then he's going to turn around and patrol back. When he does that, so that's where we're going to make our move. In the meantime, let's make a sleep pot. Get that ready to go. Okay. He's going to patrol back. Now we can go up down here. It's a safe drop down. Hit this guy. Just one hit and run towards the statue here. We got to get him to break the statue. Hide right behind the statue. Eventually he'll get upset. Now we, what we want to do is sucker a slam out of him. So just walk away a little bit. Stomp, slam, throw the sleep pot. Run right between his legs. And get the smithing stones. Okay, so Five smithing stones one and one smithing stone two. And get the fuck out of dodge. Pardon my French. Okay? Before that other troll comes back. Okay, we're just going to go back to that uh, Golden Room Graveyard. From there, we're going to make our way to War Master's Shack. Just picking up some uh, rune fragments that I forgot here. Okay, War Master's Shack is generally to the north. Straight north, off the cliff. And we're right here. And I told you earlier that we wanted to take the parry skill off our shield. This is how we're going to do it. We don't want parry. If you know how to parry, um, I don't know why you're watching this walker. In fact, I'm I'm honored that if you know how to parry, you're watching this walker. Very honored. <laughs> Not seen you Name's Very advanced skill. He's talked to this guy, agree with everything. Yes, takes me any interest. And he will offer his wares for sale. Over here. By Ash of War, no skill. And that's it. Well. I'm gonna put that on the shield right away. Why, Slack? Because this is why. As you're using your shield, you see on the right, the left side of the screen there, the parry skill is your skill ready to go. But that's because your shield skill is overriding your weapon skill. You don't want that. We want our weapon skill to be the primary skill. And the only way to do that is either A, to two-hand your sword, now we have Sacred Blade ready to go, or put no skill on the shield. Okay, in case you're new to the game, that's why we're doing that. Okay, down to Ash of War. Shield, no skill, standard. And now, because there's no skill on our shield, the Sacred Blade is ready to go. And we have another flask. Add charge to flask. Flask charges. Oh yeah, let's set this to one and five. Okay, you don't need much help. Put it all into FP. Right, that's it. Ready to rock. Next, Mr. Laptop says 
Saints Bridge and Death Touch Catacombs. Oh yeah, the Exalted Flesh run. You need a couple of Exalted Flesh. Straight to the northeast here, there's an unmarked enemy camp here. I call this Exalted Flesh Camp because there's a free Exalted Flesh in here. You can grab this um, butterfly here and just go in the back here. Hook around, bash through here, and get this Exalted Flesh right here and run away. Straight down the hill here to the northeast. And you can take this little slope up here on the right side. And we're gonna help out Alexander. Can you hear me? Help me. I'm stuck. Talk to him. Oh, my I am these. My help him out. You can just run away to stop his dialogue. Two hand your sword. Hold down the interact button to press the attack button to two hand your sword. Charge attack and charge attack. And out he pops. Talk to him again, and he gives you a free exalted flesh. Well, I so now everybody has two exalted flesh. Once Let's just again, go through his dialogue until he mentions the, upon their the Red Main Main Castle. Red Main Castle, in which a fest-eyed herd whisper doesn't. <laughs> Once he's done that, you can walk away. Okay, he's talked about Red Main Castle. First thing on the agenda is to gallop down here and discover Saints Bridge. And then we're going to go do Death Touch Catacombs to finish off this run. Or to finish off this episode, rather. Death Touch Catacombs is full of skeletons. Skeletons can only be killed by holy damage. We have the Sacred Blade. It will one-shot all the skeletons. We are here for the Assassin's Crimson Dagger Talisman. This is going to be very useful as we're creating this build. This is absolutely essential. This is something I recommend for every melee build, regardless. Let's go straight for Assassin's Crimson Dagger. Okay, so you can keep your shield up now because um, it's not going to override our weapon skill. Press the weapon skill and you get the Sacred Blade. That's an instant kill on all skeletons, okay? So you see a skeleton, launch the Sacred Blade at him, instant kill. It's that easy, right? Let's go get the Assassin's Crimson Dagger. Down this way. See the skeleton rising up. Lock on, whack him. Now that our blade is loaded up with heavily damaged, because it's glowing yellow, if you just simply hit a skeleton, it will be an instant kill as well. Jump down here. That will last for about 45 seconds. Okay, down here. Lock on. Whack him. Turn around. Whack him. Gives you some troubles. Do a guard counter. And... I just want to peek out here. There's an archer just around the corner there. Let's go over here. And there's another one helping him. Just approach and that'll get him to come around the corner. Sacred Blade. Get him. Go around. Whack the archer. Double back here. Let's get Brave Lover 1. And another one over here, which we already got earlier. Having done that, let's go racing down this little tunnel here. Two more skeletons at the very end. You're going to start rising up as long as your glade is blowing yellow. <laughs> okay, Uchi Katana, pick that up. We won't be using that. Get the skeleton to spawn, lock on, sacred blade. And grab a Glade Blubber one here. This guy here, it always takes him a while. It's, it's a timed trigger. You just have to wait a moment or two. And you'll eventually spawn. Up you go. And hit him. Okay. You get dropped down here. Double back. Four more skeletons to kill here.
guard counter. In case you're new to the game, you can hold up your shield. Enemy hits it, do a strong attack. Right after. And that's called the guard counter. And we're good. As soon as you go in here, two more skeletons are going to spawn behind you. Real sneaky. Did I get the other one? Yes, I did. Okay. And I believe that's five Grave Bloodworts. One that we got here. Yep, five. Here is the lever to open the boss door. Open that up. Get some blood rose. And we can now enter the boss chamber. Rest here. You could see leave Sacred Blade on, but I think it's more effective to remove it. And just have the default Lord Sworn's Great Sword skill stamp uppercut. Okay. The way that works is you press your skill button and press the strong attack button right afterwards, and you get that. This would be more effective on the boss. All right. Let's go powder our noses and take on the boss fight. Okay, we're going to let the wolves do all the heavy lifting. We're going to spawn the wolves. This boss is an assassin. She starts out with half her health gone already. This should be no problem. As soon as you go in, put out your wolves. Refill FP. Two things you could do. You could just lock on and, and simply charge her and do a guard counter. Or you can let your wolves engage her and then do stamp uppercut. And if you miss, just keep approaching shield up. There we go, we got her. Another way you could do that is just simply, like I said, chase her around with your shield up all the time. As soon as she hits you, hit the strong attack button to get a guard counter, and um, just keep re just keep repeating that and take the death root here. And you see that we were rewarded with the assassin's crimson dagger. Hook that up right away, okay? Every time you do a critical hit, it restores HP. Extremely useful. One of the best early game talismans. By far, very useful for every melee build. And I believe that's everything I have on tap for part one. Let me just double check, see if we got a stone sword key. We got that from the Storm Hill Shack. Yep, we're good to go. Okay, so next stop, the first step set of grace. Nice long video for you guys. Thanks a lot for watching. Part 2 is coming up straight away tomorrow. And if you thought this was remotely entertaining and or informative, you know what to do. Give me a thumbs up. Post a comment. And most importantly, subscribe to make sure you get all my videos hot off the press. See you tomorrow for part 2 of my shameless faith build. Hey guys, real walkthroughs like these are an endangered species here on YouTube. 
For a complete lowdown on the YouTube video game walkthrough scene, check out my Patreon page and please consider making a donation to yours truly, Major Slack, to help keep real walkthroughs alive on YouTube. You can donate as little as $1. That's $1. That's all. That's all it takes. All right? Thanks a lot. Really appreciate it.